The alarm went off before we could even talk. Oh, that's too bad, bud. But at least you have people to want to come and visit you. My family hasn't been to see me since my trial. You eat nine people, and all of a sudden, they don't know who you are anymore. Wait. What? Did you say eat people? Are you a cannibal, Caleb? Well, that's not how I would define myself. If we're going by what I'm most passionate about, I would say that I'm a woodworker. Why did you think I was in protective custody? I don't know. I guess I hoped you were another cop wrongly convicted of crimes you didn't commit. Nope. I did all my stuff and more. There's tons they can't even trace to me. The secret is eating the evidence. OK. This is just great. I don't see anyone from the outside for another three weeks, and my only friend here is a cannibal. Woodworker. All right, this is going to be tough. I'm really going to have to thread the needle. Oh! I got really good at threading needles. Back when you were making your skin suit, I know. Look, I like being friends with you, but you have to stop bringing that up. But we're friends. No, I'll tell you one thing. You are not looking for a cannibal. Why do you say that? With all that blood, no self-respecting cannibal would waste all that sauce. See, Charles, he's a foodie like you. Who are you? Move, move, move. NYPD down, down. On me. Hands are in. Gotcha, Pontiac bandit. Where's Doug Judy? He went to the bathroom. I'm just here to give him a haircut. I don't know what's going on. A likely story, Pontiac, but actually, you do have a lot of hair products. He's gone. He ran. Why would he do that? He helped us catch the Pontiac Bandit. That was the deal. Doesn't make any sense unless Doug Judy is the Pontiac Bandit. Put out an APB. Seal up everything for a 20 block radius. Yeah, don't bother looking for me. I'm in the wind. If you're close enough for me to hear you, you're close enough for me to catch you. Nah, I got a relay set up, brother. So if you're the Pontiac Bandit, who's this joker? A couple of years ago, you were getting really close. So I started telling all my associates, if they ever got caught, they should describe me as Asian dude, 5'8", spiky hair, wears diamond earrings, and has a British accent. So then you hired a guy who matched that exact description. No, 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 no. That's my barber, Norman Lee. He gave me the idea. You know, if you can't come in, I do house calls. You just text me a location, and I could be there in half an hour. Good to know. You know, you should actually use him while he's there. He'll give you a dope fade. I get to open up fades for my current barber, thank you. So you dragged us over here, went in there, pretended to talk, and then snuck out the basement, am I right? The basement connected to another basement, which connected to a garage, which is where my boy picked me up. Your boy? Oh, that guy from the meetup. He works for you. He pretended to be spooked by me and Diaz in the parking lot to make sure that we let you go to the next meeting by yourself. Ding, 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 ding! You win a teddy bear! You lied to me, Doug Judy. Gotta be honest, I'm pretty disappointed right now. I mean, was that even really your mom? Hell yeah, that's my real mom. I wanted to see her one last time before I disappeared. I told you I was sensitive, Rosa. Yeah, you did. Why don't you come back here and take me out to dinner? Ah, <laughs> I know you're trying to trap me, but crazy thing is, I'm tempted! That's how hot I find you. Sorry I had to go down this way, Peralta. Maybe we could have been friends in another world if I hadn't just fooled you like a little bitch. <laughs> Hello, Raymond. So, Seamus, are you going to kill me? No, don't be stupid. Nothing like that. I'm just going to find your husband, bring him here, slit his throat in front of you, then after you watch him suffer, kill you too. What do you have to say for yourself? The whole NYPD knows where you are, and they're coming for you right now. OK, thanks for the tip. Let's kill them both, get out of here before the cops come. Wait, no, 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 no. I was lying about the backup. I came alone, titled by sex tape. The desks were clean, so we expanded the search radius. Take a look. My pie. And it wasn't even eaten, just thrown away like common street trash. Makes me sick. Spend your life on the force, and it never gets easier. Hello, Raymond. Ready to go to dinner? Yes, but I have some unfortunate news about our pie. It was thrown away. No. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. And I know who did it. Who? You, Kevin. Even better than a plain scone. Plain scone. Plain scone. I should have known you were lying. There's nothing better than a plain scone. This is ridiculous. Is it? Of how the pie was disposed of. Placed gently with two hands inside the bin. That's exactly how you always throw away garbage. It is? There's only one thing I still can't figure out. Why'd you do it? Because it's disgusting. Oh, my. Captain, sorry to interrupt. I just got off the phone with the Department of Corrections. They wanted me to let you know that Ernest Zamowski died. My goodness. It's been a while since I've heard that name. I hunted him for years and finally caught him and put an end to his bloodlust. In some sick way, I am who I am because of Ernest Zamowski, AKA the, the Disco, Disco Strangler. Strangler. Oh, so you knew who I was talking about. 
So how'd he die? He was in a prison transport van and he got in a terrible accident. It burst into flames and he was trapped inside. <laughs> well, 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 he finally did it. Died horribly? Escaped. Just like he said he would all those years ago. I'll be coming back for you. I'm just like Disco, baby. I will never die. True, Disco will never die. But you will. In, In your, your cell, cell, punk. Oh, so I've told that part of the story as well. He always seduced an accomplice into doing his fiendish bidding. I bet it was the van driver. You mean the woman who was thrown violently from the vehicle and just barely survived? Yeah, I'm sure she was very badly injured. Sorry if my voice is raspy. They just took the breathing tube out. But they left a BS in? Good God. Whoa. <laughs> NYPD. Is that Raymond Holtz I see? Well, you haven't changed a bit. Neither have you, Ernest. What? Neither have you, Ernest. What? Neither have you, Ernest. Ugh, this is hard to watch. You're just as devious as ever. You seduced the van driver, didn't you? No, I seduced the van driver. She couldn't resist my groovy voodoo. And the yo-yo string was a message. The what was the what? The yo-yo string was... Captain, this is embarrassing. Can we just take him in? Murdered Robert with it. I did You lost all control and you bludgeoned him to death. There must have been blood everywhere, but you got lucky. You were in the surgical suite. It can be sterilized. You never would have gotten away with it in your carpeted office. That's not what happened. Don't say anything more, Philip. And your office manager would have heard all of the screaming, but she was at her grandson's play. Lucky again. You're wrong. You put Robert's body into a wheelchair and shoved it in the elevator. It's a miracle there wasn't blood everywhere. That's not true. Now you're in the garage with a corpse. You panicked and left your phone in your office, and you don't have your car keys, but Robert's are in his pocket, so you put him in his car and you take off. No. You can't believe what you've done. No. Philip. You're flustered. You have no GPS, so you just start driving. No. Philip. Next thing you know, you're in the Pine Barrens, and it hits you. Your uncle's cabin. He has a place there. You're the luckiest son of it a bitch. It wasn't luck. Yes, it was. You got lucky at every turn. No. I knew exactly where I was driving. I left my phone in the office on purpose. I was in a surgical suite by design, and I didn't use some glass award that any idiot would clearly see was missing. I made a rod out of a special dental polymer, killed him with it, then melted it back down. It's already in a patient's mouth, son. Pull over right here, cut the engine. Why are you doing this? Because you found my notebooks, and I assume you've deduced what I did to Susan and James. You killed James, too? Oops, I guess you only deduced the Susan part. But it doesn't matter. You never would have thought that James was a suspect. He was such a kind and gentle man. So why did you kill them? Well, because they were going to tell people about my affair with Susan and ruin my career. I knew it. I had to do it for the sake of my other patients. You know, there are a lot of people who depend on me for their well-being. Yeah, well, except for the ones that you murder. That's only happened twice. It's happened before? The Rothmans, nobody misses them. You really are a terrible therapist. Oh, wow. Strong words for someone who is clearly scared to talk about his own issues. I'm not scared, okay? For example, I had an issue with texting while driving, but I fixed it. Now I just don't look at my phone while I type. Case in point, just know that you died without saying anything real. Okay, 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 stop. Fine, you want something real? I tried therapy, it only made things worse. Uh-huh, go on. I, when I was a kid, I was acting out at school, so they made me and my parents do family counseling, but instead of helping me with my problems, the stupid therapist just brought up all my parents' issues. And once it was all out in the open, they fought all the time and eventually got divorced and everything good in my life just went away. Interesting. So you actually blame yourself for your parents' divorce? No, I blame the therapy, which we only had to do because I, oh my God, I do blame myself. <sighs> Here come the waterworks. So again, your alibi is a mysterious stranger handed you the gun, made you put your prints on it, robbed the store, and then hid the gun in your underpants. Well, yeah, if you say it like that, it don't sound believable. Oh, hey, Captain, did you get my report on the Finley murder? Oh, uh, yeah, I looked it over. Nice work. Good. Thanks, Dad. Why is everyone staring at me? You just called Captain Holt Dad. You said, thanks, Dad. What? No, I didn't. I said, thanks, man. Do you see me as a father figure, Peralta? No. If anything, I see you as a bother figure, because you're always bothering me. Hey, show your father some respect. I didn't call him dad. No, 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 Jacob. I take it as a compliment. It's not a big deal. I called Vivian mom once, and she's my fiance. Guys, jump on that. Boyle has psychosexual issues. Old news. Peralta, Holt, I know you're here. 
I'm gonna kill you. I don't think so. Uh. Put down the weapon, Figus. There you go. Oh, yes. I've been waiting for this moment a long time. You ruined my life. I had to live in Florida for six months. It's the worst. Have you tried the pizza down here? Yeah, it's the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. It somehow burned my mouth and is cold at the same time. But none of that changes the fact that you're about to go to prison for the rest of your life. Drop it, Sherbert! What? No! I've been everywhere, and I finally spotted your minivan with the New York plates parked around back. We already got all your friends, so drop it. You don't understand. I'm a detective with the NYPD. This is Jimmy Figgis. He's wanted by the FBI. No, I'm Constantine Benvoglio. And I came here to repair a ski ball machine on the Fritz, but suddenly he's trying to kill me. He's lying, Constantine Benvoglio. It's clearly a name he just made up. I'm very impressed, though. It was pretty good. I will shoot you, Sherbert. All right, fine. I will put down my weapon, but you have to promise me you will not let this man go. OK. Well, we're going to cuff everyone, and then we're going to sort this all out. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sheriff. No! Now, let's mean you take a little walk. Ooh. Drop the weapon! One more step and I kill you, Captain. Come on, Bob. What are you doing up here? Why are you on the roof? Oh, my god. You're going to zip line off of this thing like an American ninja. That is such a cool escape plan. Actually, I was going to throw Raymond over the side and make it look like a bird watching accident. Oh, please. Do you think anyone's going to actually? It's genius. There's a red-tailed hawk roost a block away, and I've got a pair of micro binoculars in my pocket like a fool. OK, well, I stand corrected. We have to call for backup. Figgis has people in the NYPD and the FBI. So good luck with that. Well, betraying the FBI is one thing, but sarcasm, Bob, wow. <laughs> What the hell? Are you throwing a tea party for this monster? He was sitting and processing, and he just looked so lonely. This guy is guilty. He confessed to me, but now he's pretending that he didn't. You must have misheard me. I didn't do anything except being charmed by these two lovely ladies. Oh, God, it was a sweet old coot routine. You're going to jail, my friend, in a trolley named Charles. A trolley? The trolleys are cool. They have the, the bells. You know what? Just take your tea and leave my purple alone, please. Thank you, ladies, for bringing a little sunshine into my gray life. You want to know what I'm going to do with the money I stole? Hmm. Prostitutes. Ah. Amy, you heard him? Tell me you heard him. What? Son of a bitch! All right, I have officers looking for her. She was on foot. She couldn't have gone far. This is her. Where are you, Trudy? In the wind, Dougie. OK, that's a cool thing to say, but what are you doing? They were going to reduce your charges. Reduced charges are still charges. And I can't go to prison. There are no dudes there, and I need to smush. Trudy! Oh, grow up, Doug. I'm an adult woman who's horny all the time. What is going on? Oh, are you judging me, though? Trudy, running from the cops is a felony. That means no more nursing school. Good, it sucks. I only went to, like, one class. What? It was boring as hell. So then I started running internet scams. Then there was identity theft. I was Queen Latifah for a bit, then Lil' Kim. That was less believable. But then I found your old notebooks. How come you never told me how much fun car thieving is? Because I didn't want you to fall in love with it. Wait, I'm confused. When did you put the bomb in the Ferrari? I didn't do it. Dallas did. And Dallas isn't some criminal I'm afraid of. He's my employee. Say what's up, Dallas. What's up? Named after a city. The hard part was trying to figure out how to tell him my plan. So then I came up with that whole boyfriend thing because I needed a distraction. I knew he'd rush in all weird and old-fashioned and try to protect my honor. How can I caress her with my pets? Look at those things. They have thumbs. I don't need you to protect me, Doug. You're my baby sister. I got to look out for you. That's so sweet and also dumb. I'll see you at Christmas, sucker. I love you, big bro. Trudy! Man, I am gutted. This is awful. Is this how you feel every time I trick you? Pretty much. Yeah, it always hurts. Wow, I'm sorry, man. 